Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart and in this video we'll be looking at the practice paper E. This is the paper one, so the non-calculator. Okay, question one is a bod mass with fractions of means times in terms of fractions. So we'll be doing that calculation first. To multiply fractions you have to make them top heavy, so this becomes 5 over 6 times 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7, so that gives you 7 over 5. The 5s will then cancel down, leaving you with 7 over 6. Alternatively, you could have said that was 35 over 30, which then goes down to 7 over 6. It's up to you if you want to keep it top heavy or do you want to change it into a mixed fraction. We're going to add it to 2 and 1 third. So you've now got 2 plus 1 third, 2 and 1 third plus 7 over 6. I'm just going to keep it as it is. If you do smile and kiss, this will become 18ths on the bottom. And you'll have 6 times 1 for the first one, 3 times 7 for the second one, which gives you 2 and 27 over 18. 18 goes into 27 once, so that's 1 that can be added on to the 2, giving you a 3. And it leaves you with 9 left over. 9 over 18 will be the same as a half. So final answer three and a half. Obviously there's there's other alternatives. I could have um converted the seven over six first of all to just one and one sixths and added the whole numbers first. But I've just gone with what came to me first. Question two, we're going to multiply out the brackets. So if you use foil or the claw, this is what we'll be doing. So we're doing four x times everything in the bracket, giving us four x squared, take away twenty x, then we'll times everything by positive two. So that gives you 2x minus 10, and there's a plus 3x on the outside there. Tidy that up, gives you 4x squared. You have minus 20 plus 2 plus 3, so that's minus 15x, and then a minus 10. You possibly could also do the box method, um, if you're familiar with that one. So the box method would be putting the 4x and the plus 2 and the x minus 5 on the outside and then multiply that way still giving you the exact same four terms so 4x squared 2x minus 20x and minus 10 and then you'd add them up along with the 3x question three we're told that an experiment using two variables were recorded like this the results were plotted and a straight line was drawn through the points we have to find the gradient basically what we've got here is a whole series of coordinates You've got a coordinate 1, 4, you've got a coordinate 2, 2, a coordinate 3, 0, and a coordinate 4, negative 2. So you can choose any of the two of them to get the gradient of the line. I'm just going to go with the first two. So your gradient is subtracting your y's, so 2 take away 4, and 2 take away 1, which gives us negative 2 over 1. So that's just negative 2 for our gradient. Um, we don't know our c value, so I'm going to use the y minus b equals mx plus c method. Sorry, mx minus a, I'm making up my own formula. So y minus b equals m, m bracket x minus a. Um, let's just go with the first coordinate and label that a, b. So you've got y minus 4 equals negative 2 bracket x minus 1. Uh, y negative 4 gives you negative 2x plus 2 when you multiply it. Minus 4 comes over and becomes plus 4. So we've got minus 2x plus 6. And that is your equation of that line. Question 4 is an uh, equation with fraction. So again, there's more than one method to go with this one. First thing I would do is probably move that 9 over. So I've got 2x equals 16 take away 9 is 7. Now, we need the x to the top. At the moment, that really says 2 divided by x. So we do the opposite and times the other side by x, giving you 7x. And then we need to divide by the 7. So 2 divided by 7 equals x. And if you want to, you can rewrite it as that. So x equals 2 over 7. Okay, given that this trinomial equals 0, show that right, we have this thing here. That, to me, looks really familiar to this here. x equals minus b. That's the only time you'll see a plus and minus with a square root. It looks very like it's a quadratic formula. So that is what we are going to do. 
We are going to do the quadratic formula and see if we can get down to that answer. This is a way of putting a non-calculated question into a paper one. So A is the first number, B is the middle number, and C is the end number. I always work out 4AC while I'm here, which is 4 times 2 times minus 1, which is minus 8. Then when I do my substitution into the formula, I have the negative of B is negative negative 2, so positive 2 plus or minus, negative 2 squared is just 4, and it'll be minus minus 8, all over 2 times a, so all over 4. Now, the double negative there, 4 minus minus 8 turns into a plus. If I didn't have the double negative, I'd be square rooting the negative number, which isn't possible, so I'd know that would be wrong. So I've got 2 plus or minus the square root of 12, all over 4. Okay, still doesn't look like what they've got. Now, they've got a root 12 into root 3, so I'm thinking what they've done is they have simplified the square root. Oops, so I'll come back down. So if they've simplified the square root, let's go over here. Um, that gives us... I'm just going to go do a wee bit of working at the side, actually. So the square root of 12... Square root of 12 is the same as root 4 times root 3. Square root of 4 is 2, so that's just 2 root 3. So I'm then going to write this as x equals 2 plus or minus 2 root 3 all over 4. Now it's starting to look really like what they've got up above. What we've noticed is we have a, if we look at this here, we have a 2, a 2, and a number that divides by 2. So I'm going to divide every single number there by 2, and that gives me 1 plus or minus 1 root 3, but I don't write the 1, all over 2. So we've got what they had. So it's about recognising that was quadratic formula, going as far as you can and seeing how you can get yours to look like that. And they're trying to do a lot of them in the exams just now. Okay, this question shows a parabola with this equation here. And it tells us to state the coordinate of the maximum turning point. So I'm just going to rewrite this another way. I'm going to write it with the 36 on the other side. It's so positive 36, so I'm going to write plus 36. Now, I just prefer it in that format. The negative in front of the bracket just tells us that this is a sad face, um, shape quadratic. The turning point, this is your B and your C value. That is your coordinates that are going into your turning point. But the turning point is always the opposite of what's in the bracket. So instead of negative 2, we do positive 2. Also, looking at the picture, positive 2 fits, but negative 2 wouldn't. And then plus 36 means it's been moved up 36. So your turning point should have been at 0, 0, but they've moved it 2 to the right, 36 up. So that's your turning point. The equation of the axis is symmetry. Symmetry runs right down the middle through the number 2. So the axis of symmetry is when x equals 2. Every single point on my dotted line there, the x coordinate will be 2. So that's the equation of that line. Then there's a second part to this question. It then puts in the line y equals 20. And it tells it, it cuts the graph at R and S, and it tells us what R is. So it tells us what S is. So S is along 6, and they want you to find the coordinates of R. So technically, if S is 6, 20, we know that R is something 20. Now, we said 2 was in the middle, so 2 was the line of symmetry. This is no working at all, it's just by jumping. So 6 take away 4 gave us 2. 2 take away 4 will give us this one, which is r. Okay, so this was minus 4, this was minus 2, and the one we're after for r will be 2 take away 4, which is minus 2. No working required there. Okay, we have a, a badge made from a circle with a radius of 5. Segments are taken off the top and the bottom. The straight edges are parallel. We have to calculate the width of the base. Now I can see this triangle jumping out at me here. Um, there. So that triangle there, um, this is five. The top and the bottom don't match, so I don't know anything else right now. So I'm going to actually draw a triangle going up the way as well. So this triangle up the way is four. This is five. I can go work out that wee side there. That side there, will be 5 squared minus 4 squared. If you don't already recognise it, this is your famous 3, 4, 5 triangle, which gives you 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. 
So if x is 3, what we've got is this is 7 and this is 3. So it makes the height in my little triangle 4. So then I'm looking at my 5-4 triangle. Um, so this is 4. And this is what I'm after. So I'm going to call that bit y. So y is now 5 squared minus 4 squared again, which is 9. y is the square root of 9, which is 3. So this bit here is 3. This bit here is 3. So the width of the base is 3 plus 3, which is 6. Now if you recognise your 3, 4, 5 triangle, you don't actually have to do all that working for that one. Okay, we have to sketch the graph of y equals sine 2x. So this means that this goes from minus 1 to, to 1, going up and down the way, and there's going to be two waves. There's no number in front, so that's a secret number 1. So your sine graph is this shape here, but we have to draw two of them. So there's my two waves. I think it's always easier to draw the shape first. Obviously, we do this with a ruler. You mark on that this is 360. You could mark that this is 180 if you wanted, where the first wave finishes. One more thing to make sure you put on is that the highest number is 1 and the lowest number is minus 1. Okay, question 9 wants us, it's um, a function question actually. Uh, two seconds. So question 9 wants us to find the value of f of 72. So this is when you sub in x is 72. So we have 4 root 72 plus root 2. If we want to simplify root 72, that is 36 and 2. Now the square root of 36 is 6. There's a 4 in front, so 6 times 4 is 24. So we've got 24 root 2 plus another root 2, which is 25 root 2 in its simplest form. So that is your answer for part A. 25 root 2. That doesn't look much like a 5. Right, so 25 root 2. Then it says part B, find the value of t given the f of t equals 3 root 2. So the first thing to notice is that the x has been changed to a t. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to write 4 root t plus root 2. And then I've said it equals this. So we put this equal to that. So we've made a wee equation. So 4 root t equals, root 2 will go over and become negative, 3 take away 1 is 2, so that leaves you with 2 root 2. We then want to deal with that 4, the opposite of times before is divide by 4. So the square root of t is uh, 2 root 2 all over 4, so that becomes um, root 2 over 2. And then... The opposite of taking the square root is squaring the other side. So t will be this whole side squared, which means you square the top and you square the bottom. Root 2 squared is just root 2 times root 2, which is root 4, which is 2. And 2 squared is 4, so it's 2 equals 4, and I've no room, but t equals a half in the end. So it's a different way of doing a function question, but part A is quite often substitute, part B is make a wee equation. And our last question tells us the area of this triangle is 7, we want the value of x. So area of a triangle is half base times height. Okay, so we know the area of this triangle, so we know that um, a half times our base of 2x times our height of 2x minus 5 equals 7. Now a half of 2 is just 1, so I've just got an x in front of the bracket, so multiplying that out gives me 2x squared minus 5x equals 7. It's looking a bit like a trinomial, so I'm going to bring that 7 over, and I've got a trinomial equal to 0. The minute you see a trinomial equal to 0, it means you have to factorise and put it equal to zero. So remember there's different ways of factorising here, sorry, I keep trying to move this. So different ways of factorising, um, if we're doing the St Andrew's Cross method, 2x times x, numbers that multiply to 7 are 7 and 1, I'm guessing the 7 goes there and the 1 there. 
2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 7 is 7. To make that negative 5, the takeaway had to go over the 7. So there's your brackets. So 2x minus 7 and x plus 1. If you do the box methods, you do the box method, that would be a 2x squared. That would be a minus 7. And this time you're looking for numbers that multiply to not minus 7 but minus 14 because you multiply the outside numbers. So numbers that multiply to minus 14 and add to minus 5. That would be minus 7 plus 2. So you've got minus 7x plus 2x. Let's look what they've got in common. Up and down column wise, there's a 2x there and there is a negative 7 there. Um, looking at the rows, we have an x there and it looks like there's nothing there. So that's really just number number 1. And then your brackets are x plus 1, 2x minus 7, which is what I had using the other methods as well. From there, you then split these up. 2x minus 7 equals 0. And x plus 1 equals 0. So that gives you 2x is 7 and x is 7 over 2. And that gives you x equals minus 1. Now remember, x was to do it with um, a size and a triangle. So that's not possible. So you just always write not possible there. So final answer is x equals 3.5. And that's what they ask. They ask for the value of x. Sometimes might then say, oh, what is the base of the triangle? But they don't. So final answer, 3.5. Thanks very much.